What's up guys? Today I have a really cool blaster to show you. It's another Nerf AEG to hit the market and it's called the Colonel Wasp 76. The Wasp 76 that I have here is an upgraded model sold exclusively by Monkey Mods for 210 Australian dollars or 145 US dollars. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly thank Monkey Mods for sending this to me to review. They've had some issues sending blasters through to Australia lately, and I would have had this much sooner if it wasn't for that. Before purchasing one of these, add the link down below. If you do live in Australia, I'd check out Monkey Mods' Facebook page to make sure they can ship it through to you. As far as appearances go, it has a striking resemblance to the German World War II SMG, the MP40, if you ignore the M4-style buttstock. The shell is made of transparent plastic, which is usually a little brittle of a material to use. But on here it feels pretty thick and it feels quite durable. Also, especially because of the unique design of how this blaster works, I think it's really cool that you can see all of the internal parts through that plastic. Although I'm sure there's also some people out there who are already planning to completely paint this blaster. Out of the box, it comes partially disassembled, separated into barrel, upper and lower. Up on Monkey Mod's YouTube channel, they have a full disassembly and reassembly guide of this blaster, which I think most of you are probably going to want to watch, because it does come with an upgraded spring from Monkey Mod's, which is not installed out of the box. Luckily, it's actually quite easy to swap the spring out. It's very similar to changing it on a long shot if you've ever modified one of those blasters. Just treat the entire upper like it's a long shot, and that's how you swap the spring out. Aside from the upgraded mainspring, the Monkey Mods version also comes with an upgraded barrel. Look at the size comparison with the stock barrel. As you fire it, the dart's going to bounce around inside that outer barrel, so it's a good thing that Monkey Mods upgraded the length. That of course also allows you to add some kind of rifling to the end of the barrel, which you wouldn't be able to with the stock barrel. Something else I will mention is that the Monkey Mods barrel doesn't actually come glued into the dart gate like the stock barrel does. So if you want to use your own barrel instead, it's very easy to do so. But I would recommend gluing it into the dart gate or at least using Teflon tape and ramming it in. Monkey Mods also bundle in a buffer tube where you can attach your own M4 buttstock. And they also rewire the blaster to the rear and replace the crappy little SM battery connector with a far better Mini Tamiya one. Simply plug in your 11.1 volt LiPo, slot it into the buffer tube and attach your buttstock. Prior to Monkey Mod's upgrades, the Wasp 76 battery was normally stored inside the AEG motor grip instead, which would have really hindered the size of battery you could use. Another thing to keep in mind, on Monkey Mod's website there's a drop down menu where you can choose to either include an AEG motor grip or not, so maybe you have your own one that you want to put on here so you don't have to pay for that extra. Up top, it doesn't usually come with Picatinny rails standard, but it does have screw in slots for attaching one. I actually could have had this sent to me a couple of months sooner, but I was waiting on these particular top rails that Monkey Mods is ordering in that fit the blaster perfectly. The Wasp 76 only works with half-length darts and it uses worker talon mags. It comes with a clone of a talon mag, which I did have a little bit of feeding issues with. I think the, the follower spring's a bit weaker in it, but that does hold 15 darts the same as regular talons do. With the magazine loaded up and 3S LiPo installed, this switch here is the safety. There's no fancy fire modes, just safe and full auto. The Wasp 76 AEG uses an open bolt design. When you pull the trigger, the cylinder and pusher move forward, loading a dart from the magazine into the breech. The piston remains locked back until the breech seal is made, then it fires into the cylinder which is now forward of it. Once the darts left the barrel, the pusher and cylinder move back again, bringing the piston with it and locking it back inside the catch plate. This leads to a slight delay compared to manual springers that you might be used to, or even the Challenger Mark III AEG that I tested a few months ago. The effect isn't really that noticeable though, because it has a full auto rate of fire of 5 rounds per second. I also measured the time it takes for the blaster to fire once the trigger is pulled, and it's only 130 milliseconds. So no real different to playing with some slight lag on a video game server. One final thing I want to show you before we get to the firing demo is that the barrel's designed that it actually moves forward and back as the blaster fires. That means it has to remain loose inside the outer barrel, which could potentially affect accuracy. 
But before I test that, let's see how hard this blaster shoots over the chronograph. 223, 216, 216, 195, 212, 217, 214, 228, 224, and that's empty. Over the chronograph with worker high-end darts, we got a high of 228, a low of 195, and an average of 216. Only one shot dropped below 200 feet per second, possibly a bad dart. Seems very consistent otherwise, and outperforms the Challenger Mark III AEG by an average of 52 feet per second. Not bad at all for a much cheaper blaster. Now that we know how hard this blaster shoots, let's find out how accurate it is at a distance of 30 meters. First with no rifling, and then I'll add a bearing scar. With no rifling as it comes out of the box, with worker high-end darts it shot a pretty terrible grouping for a nerf blaster. From the furthest left shot to the two on the right it's about a 2.5 meter spread. I don't want to look at this anymore so let's attach a bearing scar barrel which will add spin to the darts and see whether that improves it at all. Alright we've got the bearing scar on now, let's see how this does for accuracy at 30 meters. Okay, well I'd say the bearing scar may have helped a bit with rifling that's dropped from a 2.5 meter spread down to a 40 centimeter one. Quite respectable for a 200 feet per second nerf blaster. And just to rub it into the Challenger Mark III, the Wasp 76 smashed it in the vertical groupings. Let's head back inside for my final thoughts on the Wasp 76 and then I'll end with some gameplay. It's very hard to talk about this blaster without also comparing it to the other nerf AEG on the market, the Challenger Mark III. Compared to the Challenger Mark III, this blaster shot 50 feet per second higher with its included upgrade spring, and it also shot a lot more accurate at the 30 meter target. Now you can also get an upgrade spring for the Challenger Mark III, which will have it match the same velocity as this blaster. However, the Challenger Mark III is way more complex to change the spring out of, and I think most people would break something in the process. This here is so easy to change out because it's separated into upper, and then all the mechanics are in the lower. So if you just remove the upper, which is where the spring is, it pretty much modifies exactly the same as a long shot that you're probably used to. 
The Wasp 76 being priced at 210 Australian dollars or 145 US dollars also makes it a lot cheaper than even some manual springers, let alone when compared to the price of the Challenger Mark III. Rate of fire is the same as the Mark III II at 5 rounds per second on full auto. So overall, I think the Wasp is the Nerf AEG that most people would pick rather than the Challenger Mark III. The Wasp does have a 130 millisecond delay before firing since it has an open bolt design, but it's not something that will actually get you killed in gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, that's all I have left to show you. Hope you enjoy. Oh. Yep, last one. 
that's it for this one guys let me know down below what you think of the wasp 76 you can click on my profile icon on the screen to sub to the channel also here's two other videos that you might enjoy one of those is the disassembly guide as always thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one that gun is beast